All right, so I'm so glad that you guys are here today to learn about container gardening. So have you heard filler, thriller, and spiller? Do you guys know that? Yeah. Okay, so for those of you who have yet to hear that terminology, here's the concept. If the container is one-third in size, then the planting is two-thirds in size. And that's true whether you've got an upright container or a low bowl. Those are the rules from floral arranging. But my belief is there's no rules. You get to do what makes you happy. But it's a guideline for you to base your um, container gardening on. So one third in size, two third is the maximum of the arrangement. You could put in a topiary type of a situation in your container, or you could do a spike in a low bowl. But that thriller is I've identified in red. The filler is the plant material that's just around the girth of the container, and then the, the spiller in orange goes over the edge. We just want to soften the edge of the container. So this is something always good to keep in mind, and you may or may not have components that feel like a thriller, but it can be helpful to guide your choices. And typically, we pick the thriller first, and then have the whole container match around that. I will say the toughest decisions are the container, and then the thriller. And after that, it's just a matter of play and what works together. So container design traditionally has been a spike in the middle, three geraniums around the outside, <laughs> and then three spring rye ferns or petunias after that, right? That's what we've done for years. That works great. It's traditional. We like that. It makes us feel comfortable. Nothing wrong with that. Or you may consider to go one-sided. And that's when the thriller sits sort of on the back side of the pot because it gives you much more room to present something forward. So many times they're flanking our front doors and you don't really see the back. So then you put your thriller on the back side of the pot. The fillers just in front of it, you still spill over the edge, but what we suggest mostly is one of those spillers is at what we call the tail of the container and right where you might see it as you open your front door. That's a special spot for you when you greet your guests, so we don't make them flat on the back side because you see that all the time. So there's a little something special for you on the tail of the container. That's what we see is done more often. Now the young folks, modern style, would suggest bold. And I apologize, this it dribs sometimes here in this hoop house and it dribbled off, but it, what it says is bold, and that's just much more geometric. It's one of this and one of that, and it's just a foliage component that looks amazing with this type of structure and that fabulous pop of color, and it's just onesies. It's kind of tricky to do that way, but it's super fun and artistic. And no matter which style you use, we're always looking at staggering the plants. So you do sort of a triangle pattern as you lay them out. We're also always aligning horticulturally, so sunshade. That's obvious. What we don't always talk about is wet and dry. So if you're putting something that's very thirsty in the same pot with a plant that can really dry out, potentially you're not using your water resources as wisely as you may. Again, no judgment, just something to consider as we make these containers. Um, maybe they span several seasons. If you put an ivy in your pansy pots a month ago, that ivy could still last in your summer pots today, and if you take good care of it, could still work great in your mum pots for the fall. So you don't have to change all the components out all the time. So some selections will do that better than others, and we can talk about that more fully as well. How about putting in edibles or annual pollinators? We're all talking about the birds and the bees and the butterflies these days. There's annual pollinators as well. It doesn't just have to be perennials and natives. Um, we like to put shrubs in the pots sometimes too. Maybe that's your thriller. And um, maybe some unique materials. You know how people will use sticks and stems and things like that as well. Usually we don't do that in the summer containers, but you can always repurpose your red twig dogwood from spruce tips into those pansy pots for the spring. So we believe in recycling. And so for the planting 101, so for the real meat and potatoes of it, I'm going to read from the bottom up. Every good container should have a hole. It needs drainage. You really want the water to drain out. 
And what we do is we cover that drainage hole just with a coffee filter. That's so that the soil doesn't dribble out and make a mess on your patio. Mm -hmm. So you cover it with the um, coffee filter and then you fill it up with soil. You see how I said soil, soil, soil? It's so important to use a really good potting mix because it has all the nutrient value you need. Um, our, the potting mix that we use here is um, has a timed release fertilizer so that there's food always available for your plants in between your hose end watering or watering can watering with fertilizer. I, I suggest that you should fertilize your containers with a, a watering can every two weeks. Mm -hmm. Certainly every month, but every two weeks if you can. But in between those waterings, you want them to still have food, so there's a timed release fertilizer in here, mm -hmm. an organic fertilizer. Mm -hmm. You guys may have heard of soil moist. It's a moisting agent that um, is like little, um, little beads that when you wet them, expand. We used to think it was the best thing since sliced bread. Well, come to find out, it's the same stuff that's in baby diapers. And we know we don't want baby diapers in the landfills. Maybe it's not such a good thing. And if you think about it, baby diapers fill up with water, but they never let it go. So that water isn't actually available to your plants. So soil moist isn't the be all and end all anymore. We try to have the best management practices of the day, the BMPs of the day, and we learn if we go in the wrong direction. So um, anyway, don't necessarily buy a soil bag that has that little water droplet on it. It, it might mean there's soil moist in there and that's not the best thing. We have another product, rock wool, that I showed you guys up front with a tower garden, and we sell rock wool as a component if you wanna add it to your soils. So anyway, so you fill it up with really good soils, and I know that's never been sexy, nobody ever wants to talk about soils, but it's so important to spend the time discussing it. And then typically what goes in is that thriller. Usually the thriller is in a bigger pot. Might be a one gallon container versus four and a half inch pots. So you put your thriller in first because it's gotta sit on that soil level right there, and then not be too tall to spill over the edge of the, t of the pot, right? One way to ensure that that happens is when you fill it up, the base up with soil, knead it down with your hands, like you're kneading bread, and push it down because there's air in it, and it will settle on its own if you don't help it settle, and you would prefer that it happen before you put all your plants in. So knead it down, set that plant there, to make sure that you can leave about a two inch lip at the top. Two inch lip could be measured just by sort of putting the, the hook of your finger over the top of the pot. Make sure that you've got that room. We'll talk about why that's important in a minute. Then after you set it in there, then you backfill with soil. Then you set your fillers in there, usually four and a half inch pots. Then you backfill again. And when you get soil over the top of all of your plants, you push every single one down with your hands and you make sure that there's a good soil to root contact all the way in between and certainly all the way around the edge. Because we find that sometimes we just don't put enough soil in those spots. And at the very end, you go all the way around the edge to get that two inch lip. And the reason for that is because when you water, you wanna water really deeply and not as frequently. So to do that, you're gonna to wanna to fill up that two inch gap with water every time you irrigate. Fill it all the way up to the top. Go water another plant. Come back to that first plant that you started watering. Fill it all the way up to a top a second time. Go away, water another plant. Come back a third time and fill it all the way up to the top. And that ensures that the water's really gonna get all the way down to the bottom. It's gonna start dribbling out of the, the base. And just like we spoke about before, means the roots are now gonna go down and find that water instead of just remaining shallow at the top. When I water my house plants at home, I probably water once a week, maybe every two weeks, depending on where the plant is. Now you're gonna know your little microclimates and your, you know, how hot your spot is and how often you need to water, but we prefer to water really deeply and then let it dry out a little bit at the top. Overwatering is when you water your plant when it doesn't need it yet. You want it to dry out up here a little bit, and then the roots go down and find the base. So that's the overview of Planting 101, and now we get to do the fun stuff. We get to pick out the plants. Mm -hmm. So thanks for your attention.